So welcome back to uh, Norfolk Broad's photo tours. Um, today we're at Ludham Bridge. Uh, we're actually going to kayak under the bridge, which is a very small bridge, um, down the Ant River and then we're going to join the Burr River and head south down the Burr River to the infamous St. Bennet's Abbey. Now St. Bennet's Abbey has so many stories about it which I'll tell you during this trip and uh, it's a very fascinating place and it's a lovely kayak but one thing I have noticed it is now April the 13th I think and as of April the 12th um, you're allowed to take boats on the broads again so suddenly the broads are full of boats. I've had a few subscribers ask me, and I've never actually explained it. The kayak I have is the Intuit three-person inflatable kayak. Um, you can get it on decathlon.com. It comes with a pump and a bag, a backpack, and three seats. You position the seats depending on if you've got two people, one person, or three people. It's a brilliant kayak. I'd recommend the three-person kayak if you want to do longer trips like I do because you can store tents, sleeping bags and overnight gear in the front and back if you're by yourself. Even with two people you can do the same. So it's the Intuit uh, three-person inflatable kayak. Back to pumping up. St. Bennet's Abbey has been around for a very, very long time. In fact, the earliest recording of any monks or religious people being on that ground is in 1020, when there were monk hermits who used to live in mud huts in that, in that area. And then King Knut, or Canute, depending on how you want to say it, in the 1020s, granted them a religious order, the Benedictine order. By, by the 1290s, the religious authority there had, I think it was 27 or 28 churches and 76 different parishes they're in charge of. But the most important thing that happened there was that because Norfolk was at that time in the 1290s and up to that period, the most populated part of Britain. They had to stay warm somehow. And Norfolk is not known for its miles and miles and acres and hectares of forest and woods. So, what did they do? They dug down into the ground to get the peat, which was a perfect burning fuel. And they dug these huge quarries and channels to dig out the peat. Eventually those quarries and those channels flooded. And that's what created the Norfolk Broads, where we are now. Thank you, Benedictine monks, for creating this.
And so again, another joy of the kayak, but I'm going to set up for a shot because the light is amazing. It's changing, the sky is changing. Get a shot of these, these harvested rush heaps um, with the dark sky behind and maybe the kayak in front and see what we get. So we have beautiful skies here, clouds which the polarizers are already picking up on. And when the light hits, like now, St. Bennett's Abbey by the River Burr, now but an archway in a Georgian mill, a lone memorial to the cloistered life. Sir John Betjeman, that's what he wrote about St. Bennett's Abbey, which is just there on the horizon over my shoulder. Now the abbey itself is interesting because it was built using a mixture of flint, which of course is local stone, but also limestone. Now there are only two places that limestone could come from. One is um, in Normandy and the other is in Lincoln, Lincolnshire. So the possibility is that the limestone was brought by the Werrymen, who are the local ferrymen of Norfolk, they're called the Werrymen. The river was the way to transport large goods so they, the theory is that the limestone was taken from the river and then used to build the gatehouse and the, the abbey behind me. The mill was built, um, I think it was the Mudd family who built the mill in the 1820s. It's one of the oldest mills in Norfolk. This was actually used to crush coal seed to create coal, coal oil. Now the reason they could build such a big mill was is that they used the structure of the gates that were already there to support the mill because lots of mills in Norfolk suffer from subsidence not surprisingly on the marshes but this mill has lasted because it and can be built bigger because of the that it borrowed the structure from the gate itself or the gatehouse So I've got the camera set up and I'm getting the arch right in the middle and then we're going to look up to get all the way up. Wide angle lens, polarizer to bring out the, uh, the sky and the doorway and then multiple exposures again so we can expose for the beautiful details on the actual arch itself and get the light coming in through the, uh, the top of the mill at the, um, at the top. See what we get. So I've come down to the river 
um, to line up a shot for that for that sailing boat that we see coming. It's right behind me there, you see it? It's got the traditional, the brown sails, the bar Dutch barge or the Norfolk barge sails. What I'm trying to do is line up, as you can see here, to get St. Bennet's Abbey, you can see it there maybe, St. Bennet's Abbey on the banks and then get the sailboat going past in front of it and then we'll crop it in a 16 by 9 to get St. Bennet's and the sailboat next to it. So hopefully that worked really well. Um, coming down, it was suddenly the sun went in and it was shady but then he turned around at the top there and came back again. So uh, there was light on St. Bennet's when he came back there was a line of light across his sails, across the uh, the burr, across St. Bennet's, and he came through that. It looks looks like a Dutch painting, hopefully, because when I was brought up, I'm, I'm half Dutch, and I always remembered these red sails on the barges uh, with the windmills, and uh, we'll hopefully try and recreate that sort of Dutch painting feel with that. So, again, the joy of the Norfolk Broads is being able to see for miles any sails that are coming your way and you follow those sails and you can get the perfect sail shot, hopefully. Another great trip. It was quite busy out there today, but uh, really worth it. St. Bennett's Mill, an amazing place, very magical. And a lovely paddle down the Ant and then meeting the Burr. Um, thanks for joining me. Join me on the next one.